but whatever. We were just talking off air about Zion's new chain, uh, which is unbelievable. It is an infinity gauntlet chain for all of you Marvel fans out there. Everybody knows how big of a fan uh, Zion is of Thanos. And look at this. I'm going to go out on a limb here, y'all. I'm going to say that these are real diamonds. Uh, we, we, yeah. Said, yeah. we said that the LSU yeah. rings may not be, uh, which they are not. But this, yeah, this is real. I have no idea how expensive it is. But to my nerd heart, that is a thing of beauty. And if you actually flip it over, uh, the Infinity Gauntlet is gripping a basketball. There it is, Danny. Great work, Danny, uh, on the video production, as always. But, I mean, if that doesn't say that Zion is ready to roll when combined with the fact that he's now 20, he's no longer a teenager, and he um, looks like he is in incredible shape, I, 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 I'm so excited. He looks like a statue. He does. I mean, he looks carved. Almost. I mean, he looks like he's fake when you see his just almost. What do you think? Minute limit on Zion? No, zero minute During these limit. eight games? Zero minute limit. I think the only reason why he had a minute limit when he came back was because he was trying to work himself back into shape and making sure that everything was all right with the knee. But once, I mean, we're four months into this thing now. We're four months into the rehab. I mean, you, you look at, you, you see what he looks like physically. Yeah. I got to imagine the work that he's put in to, to, to turn to transform his body to where he is now uh, has been a lot of game plan, a lot of hoop. Uh, so I imagine that he is he is in tip-top basketball shape yeah. and that there will be zero minutes yeah, restricted I, on I, Zion. I, I guess it just depends on how much uh, priority the Pelicans are putting into getting into this play-in game, right? Because remember, very famously, uh, that first game when he was dominating, when he hit all, like they took him out when it mattered the most because... He was at his minute limit, um, and I don't. And, and and it's hard to say how long term their their view is in all of this. Uh, but they they're going to need him if they really are committed to getting in the play. in Jordy, I'm with you. They can't have a minute limit uh, because they need to actually be better than they were during the regular season with him. They went ten and nine in the regular season. Now against some tougher teams, but ten and nine when Zion played. I I when I look at the schedule, if you want to guarantee a chance to play in. To, to get into that series with the Grizzlies, um, I think you got to go six and two during the stretch, which is again why I look at those first two games as so important. Now it's always just going to be crazy to count on the Pelicans to win six in a row or six out of eight. So, I mean, I don't I don't know how confident I feel on it, but the first two game where you open up with the uh, the Jazz and then the Clippers, you got to get one of those two, and I don't know the Jazz looking a little vulnerable. Have you seen the ESPN reports? Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell, not fans of each other. Apparently, there's a rift that they say they've... It's like they're, they're saying that they're cool now, but they're saying that they're cool only in a basketball sense. Right. And they're saying that they're cool so many times that it's obvious that they're not. <laughs> it's fine. It's you fine. There's I mean? no problem here. Everything's good. Everything's good. Why is everybody talking right. about us? Everybody keeps talking about us. We're talking about y'all because y'all obviously hate each other. Yeah. Uh, and it's pretty evident. Yes. No, I, I feel great. And look, if the Pelicans... They, they can't be having more than a minute's restriction. This is what you're asking for. This thing is built for a team like New Orleans. Yeah. Get in up. and see what happens, man. Straight and you got you got the most dynamic talent in the tournament. So, hour three. T-Bob's coming at you, 9 to 10 o'clock. Uh, I'm back with you tomorrow morning. Talking about the guy who we just ended the hour talking about. Of course, I'm talking about Thanos. Zion Williamson, the man, the myth, the legend. Shout out Lee Anderson coming on the show back in the day and telling us he was going to be in New Orleans. Well, he ended up in New Orleans, and he has had one of the most legendary starts of an NBA player ever. And this is no exaggeration, right? I mean, let's 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 take a look back because it was an interesting Pelican season in, in what happened this year. There was, like, getting that number one pick, getting that ping pong ball was maybe the apex of a lot of the Pelican fan experience, which has not always been a very good or consistent experience. That was a great night. What that led to was a ton of hype for the year. Zion, oh my God, it's going to be incredible. Then Zion gets hurt before the season starts. Then the Pelicans start 6-22, and 22, losing 13 games in a row. At that point, we even stopped talking about him because it was like nobody cared. Because how, how could you care? They were not giving you a reason to care. And so at that point, a lot of people wrote the season off. Now, some came back when Zion returned, but I don't know if everybody did. So what I want to do today is, is if you missed the return of Zion Williamson and what this 19-year-old, now 20-year-old, happy B-Day Z, 
what this 19-year-old did in his time in the NBA? How about this? This is from uh, ESPN Stats and Info. In his 19 games, Zion Williamson scored 448 points. That is the most that a player has ever scored in their first 19 games. Who's he second to, y'all? Who do you think? Can you repeat the question? He scored 448 points in his first 19 games. That's the most ever saved for one player. LeBron? Michael Jordan. That was even my second guess. Even better than LeBron. Michael Jordan. If you are the company you keep, that's a hell of a company you keep. Speaking of which, Zion Williamson, in those 19 games, averaging 23.6 points on 56% shooting. He's on pace to join Jaquiel O'Neal as the only rookies ever to average 20 while shooting over 55% from the field. How about that? Michael Jordan, Shaquille O'Neal, the first two names to come up when you're talking about Zion Williamson. He scored 20 points in at least 13 straight games. That is the longest streak ever by a teenager in the NBA. So nobody's ever done that at the level that Zion did. And it's the second longest streak uh, by a rookie since Blake Griffin did it for 14 straight back in 2010-2011. And, and, and here's where it maybe gets a little bit more interesting. Defensively, Zion, he was not solely responsible, right? As, as we'll talk about, the return of Zion does coincide with some improved defensive numbers for the Pelicans, and it's not just because of Zion, but it is partially because of him. It's also because things like Derek Favors got back. But how about his individual defense here? He held opponents to 22% shooting from the three-point line when he's the closest defender. According to Second Spectrum, that is the lowest percentage among the entirety of the NBA. Everybody who's defended at least 53s, he's just ahead. So that's the lowest. Who's in second place? Kawhi Leonard at 23%. So think about the names that we just mentioned when talking about what Zion Williamson has accomplished through 19 games in the NBA. Michael Jordan, Shaquille O'Neal, Kawhi Leonard, and even Blake Griffin. I mean, how's that for company? So... It, it's so rare for someone to be able to live up to the hype, but that is exactly what Zion has done this far. And what happens now when you give him a break where it, it, th- this break in action was actually longer than a normal NBA offseason. So he had essentially a full offseason to get healthy, to get in great shape, except the difference is the whole time he knows that he's going to be, when he does return, it's not like you're just starting game one of 82. No, you're starting one of eight, and you have to win if you want to make the playoffs. So he's had that added motivation while he's getting healthy. Remember, he got a waiver to be in that building and to work out and to rehab because he was injured. So what to expect from him here? The sky's the limit. I'm expecting pure dominance. I'm expecting this. Ironically, I'm expecting this Pelicans team, and this could go either way, I'm expecting this Pelicans team to be better in these eight games than they were in the regular season. They're fully healthy now. Derek Favors is back. He's been dealing with nagging injuries. As I said, he was one of the key pieces behind the Pelicans' defensive resurgence, uh, along with Zion. How about this? Ever since Zion returned, coming into it, the Pelicans were 26th in defensive rating. In the games that he played, they were 8th in the league. Prior to Z's return, opponents made 36% of threes. It was good for 23rd in the league. Over his 20 games, make that number 33%. Second in the NBA during that stretch. So he has a quantifiable impact. The return of Derek Favors has a quantifiable impact. When the season broke down, J.J. Redick was out. He's played a huge role from a leadership on and off court standpoint. He's someone that these young guys, a guy like Zion, can go and ask anything about the NBA J.J. Redick will have an answer. And then how about our guy Lonzo Ball? He was really getting it together, man. Maybe the most underrated shooter in the NBA, and that's not exaggeration. A man who once had one of the ugliest jump shots you've ever seen, almost Sean Marion-esque, if you will, is now shooting 40% from three. He's playing great defense. He's throwing half-court lobs design. And really, when you think defensively, should that not be a strength of this Pelicans team? With Lonzo Ball, with Drew Holiday, with Derek Favors, and I know he's not the big guy to stretch uh, that 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 you know you would ideally want, but you have Melly to play that role in some minutes if you want to hit that change of pace. Like this is a Pelicans roster that has uh, some wiggle room. They have some versatility, and then so you have the great defenders in Holiday, Lonzo. It looks like Zion's in that number. Derek Favors, and then you got Brandon Ingram, man, the scorer, who Brandon Ingram's had a weird year. 
He was thriving without Zion. He struggled to find his foot a bit in the immediate return of Zion. It looked like he was getting it together when the season broke. So really, maybe, because like it, it's kind of odd, right? How could I expect more consistency out of a 20-year-old that's played 19 games than out of a, a veteran, a young veteran, but a veteran nonetheless, like Brandon Ingram? And it's just simply because Zion's been nothing but consistent here at first. So I expect Zion to do well. I expect Lonzo Drew favors to do well. Maybe it all hinges on the level of play of Brandon Ingram. But either way, this is a Pelicans team that they're going to have to be better than they were in the regular season. Like I said, they were 10-9 and with Zion. I think they got to go 6-2 and over this stretch. All I know is I am hyped to watch. And the Thanos Infinity Gauntlet, I hope he comes out game one and they kick the Jazz's ass and then he wears it in the postgame and snaps when he's stepping off the press. That, that, would be, that would be ideal. We'll see, though. We're just a couple of weeks away from the NBA returning. 